All right, everyone, I am in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I'm downtown. It is Monday morning, about 10.30 a.m., uh, October 9th. So we're well into October, second week. Beautiful weather, though. 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 Celsius. It's absolutely perfect weather. I'm going to tell you about Hattiesburg, show you a few things as I explore the town. Let me cross the street here. You can see some Halloween decorations. <laughs> it's that time of the year. Hattiesburg is the county seat of Forest County. Now, Forest County is named after Nathan Bedford Forrest, Confederate General. He was also the first Grand Wizard of the KKK. So it's kind of interesting that the county is named after him. I was reading about the guy though. He was, um, well, let me get this, let this truck get by. <laughs> he was considered a wizard on the battlefield, an amazing tactician, but of course, being the first grand wizard of the KKK kind of ruined him in terms of how he's going to be remembered in history. But from what I understand, the guy uh, renounced his racist ways, quit the KKK, and in his final days was all about peace and equality among the races. Uh, if you've seen Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump is the great, great, is it great, great or great, great grandson of Nathan Forrest. That's who he's named after. Now, where did the name Hattiesburg come from? Well, there was a businessman who lived in the area He's also a civil engineer and a lawyer. His name was William Hardy. His wife's name was Hattie. So he platted the town, founded it, named the town after his wife. Boy, now that's showing true love, isn't it? This guy also founded nearby Laurel, which is north of here, pretty big town. And he also founded Gulfport, a town we have visited, great town down there on the coast. I'm on Forest Street now. Uh, looks like he got street named after him as well, that being Nathan. A lot of cool architecture down here. Now let's take a look at this placard, shall we? Now let's see, William Harris Hardy in 1880 near the banks of Gordon Creek, this lawyer railroad builder and Confederate veteran selected the site for Hattiesburg incorporated in 1884 the town was named for Hardy's wife Hattie Lott well, I just told you that story didn't I yeah this is Sanger Theater built in 1929 for silent film to show initially that's what it showed when it was built uh, it was considered one of the great movie palaces of the South. Now this Sanger Theater is still in operation. Here's a look at the inside. Uh, it looks beautiful. Across the street from this theater is City Hall. That's something. Built in 1923 classical revival so there's some ancient Greece cues there you can see it in the columns want to take a quick look at this post office here downtown uh, that is uh, Art Deco isn't it it is a beauty now as I told you Hattiesburg is the county seat there's the uh, courthouse Built in 1905, 
neoclassical. So that's ancient Greek or Roman cues. Again, check out the columns. It's a grand looking building. There is a monument here. Right, let's go see who that is. It says it is to the men and women of the Confederacy. Let's see what it says on the back. It's an inscription back here. Let's see, erected 1910. When their country called, they held back nothing. They cheerfully gave their property and their lives. Through the devotion and untiring efforts of the Hattiesburg chapter number 422 of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, this uh, monument is erected to the honor and memory of those who wore the gray. Well, there you go. Hattiesburg was and continues to be a lumber and railroad center. And because of that, it calls itself Hub City couple of universities here. University of Southern Mississippi. Also William Carey University is here. Camp Shelby is nearby. That is one of the premier training facilities for the National Guard. Uh, the zoo here is regarded as one of the best small zoos in the country. They got a couple of museums here. Both of them military uh, themed. The African American Military Museum and the Mississippi Armed Forces Museum. Both of those are here. If you're ever in Hattiesburg, you want to check them out. Across the street from City Hall, they have an art installation. It's called Pocket Museum. It's in an alley. Let's go take a look. From what I understand, the artwork evolves here. Different uh, times of the year. It looks like they've taken on a Mexican Day of the Dead theme here. Or maybe that's just decorations. It's always a brilliant idea, in my opinion, to do these kind of things with alleys. because otherwise they're just dark, dank parts of the city. Bunch of lockets. Uh, people professing the eternal nature of their true love by snapping one of these locks on here. Always nice to see that, isn't it? Yeah, it looks very much like they've went to... Uh, well, not necessarily Day of the Dead. These look like pirates, don't they? <laughs> yeah, Hattiesburg Pocket Museum. It's brilliant. So this is a nice place to come. <laughs> yeah, we got a pirate theme over here, for sure. Awesome. Well, um, so that is the travel brochure information. You guys ready to get into the nitty gritty? What do the numbers, the statistics, what do they tell us? Well, let's find out. Well, let's start with the population first. Hattiesburg has 48,000, almost 49,000 people in it. So, 
That's a pretty good sized city. It's never lost population. Metro is 170,000. Yeah, so there's some people here. Like I said, never lost population. So it is a pretty healthy city. Now the median age is 30. That reflects the two universities here. But this is the interesting thing about Hattiesburg. It is not only a college town, but it is one of the top retirement towns in the United States. And the reason for that is the low cost of living, the really nice uh, weather. I mean, it's second week in October and it's mid 70s. Um, so it's interesting that this town is a place where people are beginning their adult lives. And it's also a place where people come to finish out their lives. I hope that doesn't sound too grim. <laughs> but anyway, I found that interesting. Now, the town uh, is 54% female, 46% male. The uh, demographics are this. It's 54% black, 37% white, 4% Hispanic. 1% Asian, uh, the last 4% is mixed. Median household income here is $38,300 a year. That's pretty low. For the US, it is just under 75000 So median household income here is about half what it is in the US. But then again, remember, this is a top retirement town for a reason. That's one of them. Uh, housing is pretty cheap. Poverty. Got to talk about that. It's high here. 32% overall. For children 17 and under, it is 46%. So for a city this size, uh, that's one of the highest I've seen. For folks 65 and older, it's 12%. That's just above the US average of 10%. So that's actually not bad. Again, uh, retirement community, low cost of living. Now, back to the poverty. Uh, here's some of the numbers when you dive down deep into that a little bit. 30% of the town is married versus 50% of the US. So what does that tell us? Probably a lot of single female households and that is exactly so. 29% of the households in this town are led by a female. Only 7% are led by a male. And then 35% of the households are married couples. The median home value here is 131000 for the US, it's 320,000. So median home value here is about a third what it is in the rest of the US. Again, we're back to uh, lower cost of living. But we got to talk about crime and uh, it's pretty bad. Latest figures, uh, 55 incidents per 1,000 people. That is compared to 23 for the US as a whole, so that is over twice higher than the US uh, as an average. Mostly property, four of those 55 crimes were violent crimes, the other 51 property. Yeah, there's the uh, hard numbers. You can comment below and tell me what you think. I'm heading to uh, a really interesting place here called the Longleaf Trace. So uh, I'm going to show that to you. It's really interesting. Checking out this big water tower. I'm actually on the campus uh, right next to it of Southern Mississippi. There's a stadium where they play football. But here's the entrance to Longleaf Trace. What it is is a rail line and you can see that it comes out right here and stops but it's a rail line that they've
paved over and is now a trail for hiking, bicycles, uh, skateboarding, you name it. Here's a sign they have on the building that was once a railroad depot. Yeah, this building right here. Anyway, let's see what it says. Rails to Trails Conservancy Project. Longleaf Trace, Mississippi. So it starts here in Hattiesburg. Uh, let's see, 25, 35, 44 miles all the way out to Prentice, which by the way, I'm going there tomorrow. I'm going here too. Next video will be those two towns. But that's amazing, isn't it? You can um, rent bikes here. Bike rentals used on the long leaf trace only. There you go. So here it is. Uh, I'm not going to go too far, but I'm going to check it out. Trail etiquette. Just be courteous. Keep to the right, pass to the left. Pets on a leash. Stuff that makes sense, doesn't it? So as you move away from all of that industry, it gets a lot quieter, far more peaceful. Wow, and will you look how beautiful it is. It's amazing that that goes 45 miles into the Mississippi country. Well, you got to be impressed. This is a really awesome idea. Am I right? Taking an old rail line and making it a bike trail, walking trail. It's just flat out awesome. All right, well, I'm going to head back downtown and let's go check out some residential in the downtown area because that's always where the most interesting homes are. And then later on, I'm gonna grab Nicole and we are going to eat at a local restaurant. All right, so that's coming up next. So we got some of these old abandoned buildings got scattered throughout here. There's yeah, some pretty homes here. The streets are really pretty too. Look at all the trees. Yeah, definitely in the south. Look at these great old houses. Yeah, they got a lot of real nice houses here. They're not huge. I kind of like this town, I really do. I saw all the statistics, wasn't sure what I was going to think about it. And the statistics say the town is really poor and it does have high crime, but again, it's all property. I'm thinking that that's just college students causing a lot of that. In the real world, uh, real world, it's probably pretty low crime uh, when you're off the campuses. It just it feels safe. It doesn't feel dangerous here at all. It's a little run down here and there, but there's a beauty to that as well. You guys know I like that. It's a pretty nice town overall. Um, yeah, and I can see why it's a great retirement town. It was once a magnificent building. You can tell by looking at it. Uh, this is Fifth Street. That's a beautiful house there, isn't it? Stately is what comes to mind. Now there's a mural here, just in the neighborhood. I really like that. Yeah, 
You see the occasional abandoned home. Now here's one. But overall, the neighborhoods look real nice. Um, well, I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, I'm just roaming around. This is what it looks like everywhere. Just like this. Right? It's not a street of fancy houses, but it's nice. And it's pretty. The way it's grown in. Uh, you know, this is very Mississippi here. Very much a Mississippi street, right here. That's what they look like uh, here in this state. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, so, um, well, I'm gonna go grab Nicole and we're gonna go check out a local restaurant, a distinctly Hattiesburg restaurant. So that's coming up next. All right, back downtown. There's Nicole. Anyway, we are going to eat at a place called Hattie's Burger. <laughs> Play on Hattiesburg, obviously. It's a local place. It's supposed to be real good. Yeah, Hattie's Burgers. And uh, Hattie's Burgers and Blues. So, uh, wow, there's a lot of people here. Surprised. All right, so here's the menu. I'm gonna have blues at sunrise burger. It's got bacon, sausage, cheddar cheese, a fried egg, and hot pepper bacon jam. I'm gonna have french fries and baked beans with it. Barbecue baked beans. And what are you gonna have? I'm gonna have two sides. Uh, I think I'll just make mine up. I'm gonna have a burger with sauteed mushrooms, and I have to see what kind of cheeses they have. Like either jack or pepper jack cheese. They have pepper jack. Oh, okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have a burger with pepper jack, sauteed mushrooms, and I'm gonna have a side of broccoli. Okay. You're making me eat unhealthy with the burger, so I gotta do broccoli. Eating unhealthy with the burger, so you gotta have broccoli, is that what you yeah. said? What'd you knock down? Uh, everything. Our food has arrived. There's my barbecue baked beans, and this is my burger with the uh, egg and the bacon jam. Totally trendy. Very trendy, but I'm a tr I'm a trendy guy. <laughs> You're not. I'm not. Oh, bummer. No. Here's your broccoli. We've already taken or taken a few bites of it. It's it tastes good, doesn't it? It's got some kind of flavor. It has, Interesting. Yeah, it has some kind of different flavor on it that I can't place, but it tastes good. And, and your uh, burger with. I got red. Um, actually, it looks like cheddar cheese now, but it's got sautéed mushrooms on it, and okay. it looks yummy. All right. Well, this is fresh ground grass-fed. Uh, beef these burgers so looking forward to it see if it's good the baked beans are excellent they have lots of onion and a little bit of bacon and or pork mixed in adds lots of flavor fries are pretty good it tastes like fries they're not spectacular the burger is spectacular though there's the bacon jam right here it's uh, bacon -y but sweet and then the egg and this is sausage right here. And then the hamburger meat, uh, grass-fed, locally made, uh, produced. Tastes like it, it's awesome. So mine, yeah, this is a great burger. Uh, how about you, hon? I see you've uh, taken down the uh, broccoli, eating it away. Yeah, the broccoli is really, really good. Mm -hmm. But um, I really, really like the burger. I hardly ever eat burgers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's good. Um, it's very good. It's very tasty. The mush I love mushrooms on the burger. So the yeah. mushrooms. All right, cool. It's yummy. It's from delicious. Yeah. So uh, this place is very popular here in Hattiesburg. It is a local place. I can see why. Excellent burgers, isn't it, honey? All right. Here's the tab. Uh, Nicole's burger was twelve dollars. Mine was fourteen. God, they're so expensive. <laughs> Yeah, this is a cheap tab. I my baked beans for three dollars, and then the Jack Daniels for six dollars each. Those are all reasonable prices for sure. Forty-five dollars total. Right, so there it is, guys. There's the tab. All right, everyone. So that's the end of this video. Um, I'm heading into rural Mississippi next. 
should be interesting. Uh, that's up next. We'll see you then.